I know that Pastor Chris and Chief Hubbard expressed their thanks and gratitude to the people here, but I'm going to do it one more time. And it's not because you're here as much as it is because of, of the outpouring of love that uh, this family has seen over the last week. They can't express enough how much it means to them to know what Chuck meant to people and what he meant to his family in blue. And on behalf of Precinct 5, then we thank you also for the outpouring of love and support that you have shown us. You know, Chief Hubbard just painted a picture of Chuck Galloway. But you know, unless you really knew Chuck, it was very, very hard to be able to accurately know what you were dealing with. As you heard, he was a big man. We're talking about six foot four or so. Walking down the aisleway, there wasn't a whole lot of light that escaped around him as he came down the hallway. And then as you got closer, what you saw was that huge smile. But he was also a man that has a beautiful 11-year-old daughter, Sydney. He's a man who was very successful in his career prior to law enforcement. <clears throat> so much so that he almost didn't get on with Precinct 5. See, the captain of recruiting came down and shared with me a note that was in his file. And back when Chuck was applying, we thought there was something wrong. Why would a man be leaving a six-figure job to come work for half the pay, for working weekends, holidays, and being away from his family? So he was asked that question, why do you want to be a cop? And his answer was this. He said, I just want to follow my dreams. See, his dream was to make a difference. His dream was to you know, serve his community. And his dream did come true. We've received more letters and cards than you could imagine over this last week. More phone calls, text messages, everything. And I know that Chief Hubbard painted that picture, but I want to share one more with you, if you would just give me a moment. This is from a deputy, because I think this encapsulates everything, or a lot of, for the, a lot of the people who worked with him. <clears throat> the deputy writes, these past few days have been extremely hard for myself and my Precinct 5 family. The loss of Corporal Galloway, it's devastating. I come to work, I sign on to my MDT and I listen to all the units signing on and signing off duty. And I listen to the echoing voices in hopes of hearing 5 Charles 12 SO one more time. I long for those conversations that we had about life, about work, and everything in between. Corporal Galloway was a great supervisor, but ultimately he was an amazing mentor and friend. When you're running the roads with Corporal Galloway, there was no doubt that he would have your back no matter what the situation was. He was just that type of police officer, the type I aspired to be. When I became a Precinct 5 deputy, I spent 10 weeks in my FTO program, riding with seasoned officers, learning how to survive under the weight of the badge. After 10 weeks of meeting supervisors and deputies that I would be holding the line with, the one I remembered more than anyone was Corporal Galloway. Why? Because of that smile. A smile that would make you laugh, but also a smile that would make you wonder what he was up to. I remember we talked about life and why I wanted to wear this badge. We continued to converse a little bit longer that evening when I was called out on a call for duty. Little did I know that I had just met the man that was going to shape my law enforcement career. The loss of Corporal Galloway has brought a wave of emotions from tears to pure anger. Corporal Galloway, he wasn't keen on downtime. He worked hard every hour, but he had a secret passion for Denny's. And when you needed a friend, he always had time and a room at his table for a cup of coffee and a smile. Anyone was welcome at Corporal Galloway's table. 
My fellow deputies and I discussed in depth what would be the best way to honor Corporal Galloway, and we all came to the same conclusion. The best way to honor him is to get to work. See, that was one of his favorite phrases. With that being said, we need to stand up. We need to dry our tears because we have work to do. That's what, what Cal Corporal Galloway would have wanted. That's what Corporal Galloway would have done. This, <clears throat> this is why each of you are heroes in Chuck's book. Because you are the reason why he put on the badge. You're the reason why he got up every morning because you do the same thing. You get up, you put on that uniform, and you go to work. You go to make a difference in your community. Some call it a vocation, some call it a mission. You just call it being on the job. You know, Chuck's family <clears throat> wanted me to speak to you, to Chuck's brothers and sisters in blue. They said, speak to the people that are here who know what Chuck's life was like. Well, all of you who are sworn personnel, by virtue of that badge that you put on, you do have a mission. And that mission, many times, brings us face to face with the broken, the sinful, and the dark side of humanity. But still, every day, you go and you pin that badge on. Every day, you go out and you make a difference. You make the people around you better. You serve the community that you love. Because we are sworn to protect, to comfort, and if need be, to ultimately give of ourselves. But I don't care if you have been in law enforcement for two years or for 42 years. This mission that you and I have signed on for is not sustainable. We cannot continue to successfully serve the community we love when there's this blatant disregard for life and it permeates our community. We cannot continue to, to serve successfully the community we love when there's this blatant disregard for authority because it doesn't fit a particular narrative. We live in a society that is governed by laws and governed by rules, and you, because you wear that badge, you are sworn by an oath to the state of Texas or whatever state name is on your badge to uphold those laws. And that is regardless of the cost. Nobody knows that better than the Galloway family. This blatant disregard has to end. We cannot allow a person to take a human life for no reason. We cannot allow a person to rob an 11-year-old girl of her daddy. We cannot allow a person to steal a faithful public servant from our community or to take a friend from a department. We can't allow a person like this to dictate the direction of our community and of our personal lives. 74 officers killed last year through violence. I'm leaving out COVID and I'm leaving out the auto accidents. I'm talking about through violence. And we're on a, 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 a pace to surpass that this year. You know as well as I do, you read Houston surpassing Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York and murders. And it's not because of the work that's being done by the law enforcement officers. You are busting your hump every day out there to make your community better. Three HPD officers last week shot by a defendant who had at least nine prior felonies and who was wanted for aggravated robbery. And I'm only talking about the police shootings. I'm not talking about 
the, the citizenry out here. I'm not talking about the public, the people who go home every day and all they want to do is live a lawful life. They want to be able to have their kids and their spouses go places without fearing that they're never going to come back. This has to stop. Those in authority who are coddling the criminals and enabling this behavior have culpability just as those who are pulling the trigger. And I'll... And I'm on behalf of all of you who wear the badge, on behalf of the Galloway family and on behalf of the, the vast, vast majority of our citizenry, those who are in power, those who are making decisions, those who are setting policy, those who are elected, those who are appointed, I ask you to do one thing, and that is to have the courage that Chuck had. Have the courage to do what's right. Have the courage to make decisions that protect the innocent. Have the courage to pass laws and then govern within those laws. Have the courage to stand up against those who are destroying our state, our county, our city, and the communities that we live in. We cannot continue to do our jobs effectively when the rest of the judicial system is broken. This three-legged stool is standing on one and a half legs. When we have governments that are, are funding three times as many public defenders as they are assistant district attorneys, when we have magistrates and judges who are issuing minuscule bonds to recidivists so that they're back on the streets so that you have to deal with it again the next day, and the people that we serve have to live in fear. People need to be held accountable because enough is enough. There's no other way to say it. We're tired. We're tired. We're tired physically and we're tired emotionally. This is a fight between good and evil and we will not let evil prevail. You know, it's credited to Andrew Jackson of saying that one man with courage is a majority. Well, I'm telling you, we have a majority. We have a majority because that thin blue line isn't so thin anymore. And I'm not talking just about police officers. I'm talking about the public. I'm talking about the people we serve, the community who just want to live in peace, who want to be able to, to not live in fear. But the public can count on one thing, and that is that you will get up tomorrow morning and you will go and do your job. That's what Chuck did. So as his co-worker said a few moments ago, <clears throat> the best way to honor Chuck is for us to do exactly that, for us to be able to get up, to go and do our jobs and make a difference in the community that we live. You can honor Chuck when you make that crime scene and you treat everyone, whether or not it's a suspect or whether or not it's the victim, with dignity and respect. You honor Chuck when you make that domestic violence call and you take the time to search out that, that child who is in the other room crying because of the way his parents are acting and you go to your car and you bring them back a stuffed animal so that they have something to hold on to and it might bring them some comfort. You honor Chuck when you talk somebody off the Sam Houston tollway who's thinking about jumping. Or you sit and you hold the hand of somebody while the fire department cuts them out of a major accident. You, we, we will continue to honor Chuck by doing what he did because that is the desire of Chuck's family. I'd like to end today by <clears throat> asking for God's blessing, not only upon the Galloway family, but upon all of those of you who were sworn to protect and serve, who go out selflessly every day and put on that badge. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you help us never to forget our fallen brother 
and remind us always of those who are in pain who were left behind. May this community continue to build on the sacrifice of this man who loved it so dearly. And we ask you to bring them peace, something that only you can do. We thank you, Father, for police officers everywhere. And we ask you to give them wisdom and clarity when making tough decisions and fill them always with your integrity. Bless all who wear the uniform in the service of their community. And finally, let us remember all of those who have fallen in the line of duty. Those who never failed in their mission of service, even when it meant giving of their own lives. And we ask all of this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you do, and I thank you for how you do it. Remember his name. Remember his legacy. And remember his impact. Corporal Charles Udell Galloway, Jr.